Hello everybody and welcome to the next section of our series of Rust projects. Today's project will be a slightly smaller project as we have to spend a fair amount of time just learning how to use futures and Tokyo. The first thing we need to know about futures and what is a future? The project for this section will be building something that can handle futures which we will use in the project which we're doing the next section. The first thing we need to know about futures and what is a future? Basically it's just a trait from a library. The plan in Rust is to bring futures into the standard library soon but they are not quite there yet and for now we will be using the futures as they exist in the futures library and crate. Now futures are very very simple they only have three things that they can do or at least that they start with they have a type which is an item and a type which is an error and they have a function which is called poll and this poll method will return a poll item which is basically a result with the async enum saying whether or not it is ready and if it is ready inside that enum is the item. If there was a problem then it will return the error without that being inside the async. That will change when futures are stabilized but for now this is what we've got to use. When they're stabilized they won't bother with the error type because often futures don't need an error type. So if you do need an error you can just use a result like you would on any other Rust function. So. So the first thing we're going to need to do is create a new library and we'll call this chat box because that is what today's section will do. We'll create an area that can handle the chat in and out and just manage a chat safely so that asynchronicity bugs. Tokyo and Futures basically provide asynchronous running code. That is, they work at separate times but they are not completely separate threads. There is a mechanism where of using approximately the same number of threads as you have cores in your computer and sharing the work relatively evenly among those and never blocking. The most important thing about futures is that they never block. So when you call the poll function, it will either return not yet ready or ready. But if it's not ready, it won't block like standard IO methods often would. So to import the futures library we are just going to use futures equals 0.1.25 and inside this project we're going to need to create a future. That will be a struct and this is our chat box. And all this is going to do is maintain a single vector of all of the chats that have been said in a way that no one else can accidentally edit them. So it's acting a bit like a mutex, but there will be no blocking on access. For now though, we're gonna start by just demonstrating what a future is. So we're going to import futures and make this implement the futures trait in as basic way as possible. So use futures future. And we're gonna implement future for our chat box. The first thing we'll need is an item type and for the moment we'll make that item type string. The error type we will just leave as an empty type. This is quite common in futures. If you know your future is not going to have an error, then you can do this. Finally, we need to write the poll function. So we're going to pull and this takes and mute self and we'll return a result of an async, now that is an enum, so that's either ready or not ready, of self item. Now I tend to just write self item here, that means that we only need to change it in one place if we do, but we could write string there, that would be fine. And the same is true for self error. This matches the interface. We're also going to need to use Tokyo, and the version for Tokyo that is currently out as I write this is 0.1.16. This will give us access to all of its various types and the easiest way to grab them all is to use prelude. Tokyo prelude star. There's a lot of things we're going to be grabbing from that so assume it's from prelude 
if not otherwise mentioned. So for now, this function is just going to return a result. And that result will be async ready. And we'll just return a string. So hello dot to string. And that is a future, though realistically, it's not going to take very long to run. Why bother putting that in a future at all, I hear you ask. For now, I just want to show you what we can do with futures. So inside this function, let's create an instance of a chat box and we'll call it F. So futures actually have a lot of things you can do to them. A function like map is one of them, which will take the result of that future and convert it to some other type, but only once the future has finished. This actually creates a new future called a map with a capital M containing the original future. And the map is just a struct from the futures library, which will hold access to this. So it kind of creates a bit of what's often called a state machine here. We're just building up a future. So I'm going to run here print line of the result here and return nothing. So now our future has a return type of nothing because um, print line doesn't return anything and that's our return for the function. So here I'm going to put print line beginning and our future hasn't run. So my aim in this is to show you that the future doesn't run until after we call run. So we're going to use Tokyo run on this future. Here I've chosen F, so F won't actually print anything. We'll try it with F first. Let's run that test, cargo test. Oh yeah, don't forget to import super. A minor frustration I have with Rust is of course that inside the test stuff, because that never makes it to the compiler normally, you don't get all of the um, code completion, the, um, the code checking on everything that happens inside the config test area. Now the reason it's complaining is because uh, the future f has a type of string, its, its item type is string. But when we map it to something which returns no item type, that means we have something with an item type of nothing. And Tokyo Run will only accept futures if their item and error type are both empty. So let's run this and here we go, that's worked. And notice it printed hello, but it's not printed begin and end. And that's because in tests, of course, it doesn't actually print those. We, if we make it fail the test, then we can get it to print them. So let's stick a panic on there and get it to print. And the reason it printed the other is, of course, because that's happening on another thread in another place. So it's not being stored by the, uh, the test system that, that hides those unless it fails. So I don't quite get to show you what I was hoping to, because here we've got it printed the hello, it printed the begin and the end, and it wasn't really that the hello happened first. If this was running in a normal function, not in a test, we would have got beginning, hello, ending. 